Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, April 16th, 2019 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Portland, Oregon. I mentioned several times before on this podcast that I really, really like DNS logs, and I think they give you sort of the best bang for the buck when it comes to security monitoring, because anything happening on your network typically reflects itself in DNS. But in talking about DNS logs, I also sort of got some feedback from users and also from students in class about uh, some sort of odd DNS records that they ran into and that in the end actually turned out to be not malicious. I summarized some of them in a post on Storm Center. But uh, just one I want to point out here in the podcast is these DNS lockups that uh, anti-malware typically does. It really looks sort of like data exfiltration and it is a little bit data exfiltration, but data exfiltration for good. What anti-malware typically does is it takes hashes of software that you're running and does DNS lockups for the hash at a particular domain that the vendor set up for this. And then the response will tell the anti-malware if this is malicious or not. And of course, uh, this also then provides some statistics for the vendor. So the vendor can figure out uh, which software is quite popular, which often correlates with that software being not malicious. I listed a few more sort of similar cases in the post. If you have any additional issues that you ran into, any false positives in DNS logs, uh, well, uh, send me a note or just leave a comment uh, with my post. If you're using Adblocker Plus or uBlock, uh, you may be vulnerable to a problem that was introduced with a new feature mid-July last year when version 3.2 was released. And well, other ad blockers that have similar features uh, may actually be vulnerable too. The problem here is the rewrite feature and the fact that you may download filter lists from various pro. Providers. The rewrite feature allows you to create rules that will rewrite URLs. Now, how these URLs are being rewritten is somewhat limited. For example, you cannot change the origin, so not the host name of the particular URL that you're visiting. But where this could become still a problem is if you're using JavaScript like fetch or XMLHP request to download additional JavaScript code. In this case, this rewrite feature may actually be used to rewrite the request quest and with that redirect you to a different site that will then return malicious code. Part of the problem here is, of course, that the browser doesn't really know what's going on. The browser just receives the response and doesn't really know that the URL was rewritten by this plugin. Now, the solution, of course, is use a plugin that does not use this rewrite option. Also, in order to exploit this vulnerability, you have to download a filter list that actually takes advantage of this rewrite vulnerability. So in some way, it's a feature that sort of works as intended, which is why there may not really be a patch available for this particular problem in the future. The only option you have is use a filter that does not have this rewrite functionality. Maybe a future version of Adblock or uBlock will allow you to turn off this feature if you don't feel comfortable with it. Digital imaging and communication in medicine, short DICOM, is the name of an image format that's often used in medical applications. And I think it was last week where I mentioned this format uh, as some researchers figured out how to modify 3D images uh, created in this format. But we now have another vulnerability that's actually not related to this modification issue. 
these uh, DICOM images uh, do have the property that they do allow for a preamble. The reason for this is that it should allow, for example, for viewing these images with incompatible image viewers. Now, the problem with this is that in this case, the actual signature that tells you that this is a DICOM image is further into the file. And at the beginning of the file, you may very well have an executable. These type of files are often referred to as polyglot files because depending on what software you use to look at the file, it may behave very differently. In this case, if you just double click on the file, it may execute this executable header of the file. However, if you load the file in a standard compliant DICOM viewer, it may behave just like any other DICOM file because it still remains a valid file in that format. And for a while now, I've noticed that uh, VPN vendors uh, tend to be rather aggressive in trying to place ads for their various VPN products. And lately, according to Bleeping Computer, some of them have resorted to the good old scare tactic of claiming that a user's system is infected and with that trying to convince them to sign up for their VPN service. These ads apparently are showing Showing up on mobile devices, targeting mobile users, asking them to install the respective mobile app for the VPN vendor. Needless to say that these are probably not the VPN vendors that you should be doing business with. Before you do sign up for a VPN, make sure you are consulting some reliable reviews. I've also seen a lot of sort of fake reviews of VPNs that are really just geared towards getting you to sign up for one of the reviewed VPNs. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.